Revealing the Hidden Formats in Genesis. This will be part one. And I want to tell you a little bit before we get going. There is going to be no proper English when I show this to you. This is text that was written long ago. It's I'm using the Hebrew text, and I have a Bible program that I can click on a word and show you strong concordance, and then a little bit extra how the New American Standard actually tells us how many times per word they used that Hebrew word for. Now, what I'm doing in this series is trying to stop people from having, or this will stop people from uh, trying to edit um, a hidden format in the text. Our creator has given me uh, his hidden formats, which have specific rules. You have to follow the rules. There are either three or four different rules on how those formats are made up, but they are repeatable. You can't get away from it. It's repeatable. And being in literature, the first time that can be done like this, it has to be called empirical evidence, like they use in mathematics, that everybody repeats it over and over. They'll get the same uh, formats. But my words are going to be a little bit different than other people's words because our Creator made me see him eight times. You have a belief, I know he exists. So, what I'm going to do is start off by showing you the text, um, what it would look like when I get it cleaned up, and that would be like this. As you can see, this is what I'm going to show you what I get from the text. But what you're going to notice is, see these three verse, that's what I call them, three verse or three sentences, that the next set below, these will actually, these make a small paragraph, and then they'll make a larger paragraph combined together. doesn't always happen, but it does come up quite often. And it's absolutely surprising. So when you're saying that there's no format that I'm finding, or no um, first writer's formats. Um, example, you take Daniel and start right from the beginning of Daniel, and I can tell you that is the easiest book to put into a three-verse grouping all the way through it. All the way through it. The only thing is, is I threw out one chapter. But take a look and see if you can do it as well. Or you can take any of the first nine psalms and put them over into the text. Just remove all the punctuation, all the capital letters, and then uh, I'm like I'm leaving the verses here where they come from, so people can examine this for history and not get lost when they're opening up the book and when they're opening up this text and when they're going to see the next text that I take from here because sometimes these words are out of order or these groups are out of order and I need to put them in other places as well. Now, I said there is no proper English involved and that's true. Now, the green text is text that I needed to add to be correct or to read the sentence correctly. What I'm doing is I'm taking two words, two major words, and then connecting them with the least amount of words. What happened is if you start in Daniel or Psalms, and you work with the text, and then you break it up to the smallest little verse you can get, you will find that that's what happens. So that's why I'm continuing it this way in here, or the, all the other books that I'm doing except for Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Um, and that's I've already done, so you can find that in the video description below. But the the blue text is no longer being used. This text has 
Uh, I've got a few reasons. I don't know if that's really big enough for you guys to read on the screen or not, but what that is is um, it does repeat a lot of times. The text just doesn't matter. Um, but there's the five reasons that I've pretty much covered probably 85%, probably closer to 90 yeah, even over 90% of why I'm removing a lot of the text. Um, the purple words or the violet colored words. These will be all capital letters when I'm referring to our Creator. Jesus' words will be colored in red and the first letter will be capitalized for Jesus. Say, if Jesus walked, it would be capital J and capital W. But if I went around and said, and Jesus said this and that and that and this and there and them, none of those little words are going to get capitalized. Directly meaning Jesus will have capital letters. Just like all colored words for our Creator that are tied to our Creator will be capitalized. Now, there will be one word that doesn't, and I want to put it out there right now, and that'll be the, the word land. Because the word land, um, first let me define what our, the Hebrew defined the word land as, and that is the surface that you see, okay? So when they speak of the land, that's one way to be said. But then our Creator is going to call it the promised land. So when other people are talking, say, like Joshua or Moses, and they talk about uh, the promised land, um, sometimes I'll have promised land all highlighted. But when they're referring to just the word land, like go out and spy out the land, that land will have just a capital letter to refer to it as this is our creators. It's special. So all people's names that are important. Moses, Abraham, those will have capital letters, okay? Now, um, everybody else, no, they don't get that. What happens on a few words that when I do it like this, that example, the word he here, we have he meaning the creator, capital H-E, meaning Jesus, and a small h, small e, would be he, the normal male, okay? Um, his, uh, him, um, yours, um, I'm trying to think of other words that I know that have that uh, small little word, but you will see that small little meaning having three definitions, and I will color them that way. Now, the words for angels, when they're, when the angels are speaking, will all be in green text. Um, there's other text that will be highlighted in a different color, and I will explain that when I get there. This is all to help the reader go through the text and understand who is who and who is saying what about when, okay? So the thing here is example. Here is the letter H being capitalized here on the word heavens. Do you know that there's three heavens, okay? And the only way I can do this in the text for the three heavens is, um, well, I guess uh, this is the first time I've been explaining this in Genesis. So if you're starting out with this book, you should know that New American Standard, Psalms 48, verse 2, tells us where heaven is at. Because in it, it says Mount Zion, which is our creator's mountain, is in the far north. The far north 
And I've got a video on that below that if you want to quickly zip over and watch it, it's real good. I show you all the 39 or 29 Bibles and how they do it, and I explain in detail. I go into detail in my videos. Okay, so get used to it. Um, but the star's motion makes this mountain, and the north star is the point. So this is Mount Zion in the far north, okay? Heaven is above the far north. The stars make the second heaven. The third heaven is where the birds fly. So you'll have all capital letters, and probably in violet, will be uh, heaven. And you can see heaven's here. That's the stars. And then when it's a little h, you'll know that that's uh, the heaven for earth. Now, now that you've got a breakdown on how this is proper Hebrew at that time, thousands of years ago, these groups that you see here, these are known as psalms, okay? Not that they're songs. These are psalms. It's the style of writing that's the way the first writers wrote. You have to remember, the, the scrolls that they were using, they need to keep to the minimal amount of words as you can go, as you can get. And you'll find that these tiny little paragraphs that you see, um... In other places, when I've been asked about, well, what does this mean? I can speak 20 minutes because the one word needs to go over here, and this word goes way over here. And you got to understand this meaning, this meaning, to this meaning, about one paragraph, okay? So these are really condensed, but there's a lot being said in these. In fact, for those who are cosmologists, wait until you see what's going on here. Because I have to follow the example that our Creator showed me by revealing His hidden form as to me what happened in Genesis. Okay? And I will explain that as I start going here. Now, I wanted to say something about... Um, no, I better not. I, I don't know how long I'm going to be be here doing this so I'm trying to keep these to 40 minutes and then stopping them it seems like when I try to download them anything more than I think 53 minutes Google says the files too large you can't download it so I'm keeping these as archiving them for myself so that's why I'm putting a 40 minute limit on them and then sometimes you'll see that I get panic mood mode when I'm over 45. Um, the definition, what you see here, is the title God, and this is the Hebrew word here, and this is the word or the title that I will be using. Let me show you why I do this. This is the uh, Hebrew's or no, this is the program that no longer exists, as you see up and above. And what it is, is that when I click on the word here in the New American Standard Bible, over here, this is the New American Standard Concordance of Strong's words, which means these words are not going to be spelled exactly the same. For copyright reasons, they have to use a different spelling in order to keep each and every one of these words related to strong. But down here, this is what's unique about it, and this is why I believe they don't allow this program anymore to exist that I know of. Now, I could be wrong. It could be out there, but I haven't been able to find it anywhere. You can click on one word and get the word, but... Notice here, this is just telling us how many times they use the title God here this many times and used it as goddess twice. Down here, it's mighty, rulers, shrine. 
So if you're thinking that the text is exactly from the Hebrew words in the manuscripts, no, that's not true. Um, what, well, I'm going to show you that, but what I want to do here is I want to show you something here. And that is, when I clicked on it, I got this word Elohim. And what I did in the program, I was able to copy every verse to a word processor and then read each of these verses correctly, okay? And I'm telling you that of all the 2,325 times in those ver or of those verses, because the word God can be used maybe two times in one verse, um, these are the verses, so there's probably more titles than that. But the object is, yeah, you can see I've got 225 right here just for God, and it's got all these others. But the object here is only a few times that title, Creator, does not fit. When you read all the text, and I'm looking for what is the words telling me is the definition of that word, and I can reverse it, for, search a word, and find out from the words being used what is the definition for that word. Um, what I did here was I realized that the word or title creator is correct and not the title God. The title God is referring to in the text will be related to when they're speaking to a foreigner about their God comparing them to our God. But when it's in first person, we know his name. Okay. Now, they used... Um, or they have covered up the letters here that I'm using here. This is YHVH. Let me see. Should be able to find this text. Okay. Now what happens here, let me get rid of me. And let me get rid of, oh boy, that was up there for a long time. No, it isn't here when I'm in this book. Or no, this, okay, I'm, I'm confusing myself. These are slides. Um, so let me see here. Let me put this slide back up in case I did make a mistake and I had it covered up. So take a screenshot and go back and take a look. Sorry about that. I, I trying to be the all one guy here trying to make sure you understand what I'm doing here and trying to show you so I'm getting myself more confused okay here it is now in Hebrews concordance when you click on a, 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 the all capital letter word Lord you can see that we're getting the letters YHVH in the Hebrew text and you can see down here, Hebrew word. And then you can see the word title God as Elohim. Now, here, why his name, YHVH, is listed 6,825 times, and yet they've replaced all that, his name, to put into two titles. And they lied to you when they do that. When you read... That in the book, you lie, especially New American Standard, because I can show you right here. Here's the word Lord. Here's this. Here's this word Lord. Here's the letters. But here we have Yah. And it says the name of God of Israel, which is wrong. And see how many times they got it capitalized? So there's 48 times more that they lied to you that they didn't do it here. But it is actually the name that the Hebrews gave Jesus at the time that David uh, was told that through his son they'll have a king and their, their kingdom in heaven will be forever, or his kingdom in heaven will be forever. 
They named him, yeah, their Psalms 149 is the one that, the Psalms that I know that I usually point to. But that is, this is the title, but they've actually removed his name so you don't know. You think his name is Lord or God. That's wrong. From today on, um, notice they have the letters YHVH here. They had no O. So anybody saying this word is wrong. When they're saying that this word, this is closer. But actually, a lot of times in Hebrew, the letter H on the end is silent. So if we just use the letter, well, I did. I used the first letter in the V, YV, to uh, uh, make sure everybody stays on the same page now as uh, saying his name this way. Now, if you learn the Hebrew pronunciation for those two words, fine and dandy. Uh, you'll be better than I am when I'm when I'm saying this. But I'm so used to saying YV when I'm doing this and spelling and correct, putting the text in. I just um, have getting get away from, got away from that. Trying to keep in English. So now you see that the yellow, even though I'm adding it differently, this here. It's really the correct title. This, his name, I needed to be added into the text. Like I said, I'm looking for a two major words to make a sentence. Okay, creator, created, heavens, earth, earth, formless, emptiness, or whoops, so it's void and darkness, and creator moved. Okay, now, um... The green words are being added. The blue words are being removed. And I'm removing them like I think I said already once. That's the list. Okay. Now, when it gets down to a word like this where I got emptiness, um, and I've got this hash mark, I am saying that I'm going to take this word and I'm going to change it. Okay, let me show you down here, if you can look down here for a second. The word good to heaven, you know that's way too far off, okay? But when I take you to the Bible program here, and you can see that when I click on the word void here, it comes up here, but down here is used the word as emptiness once. So I can put the word here, emptiness here, and say that this is not really a yellow word or yellow highlighted word. Now, I did not check every word like I did in our creator's hidden formats for this because that's why I'm saying I've given myself a little bit more leeway to edit the text. But it still should, proves that there's a three-verse format from the first writer's writings. And now I guess, let me see, I wanted to uh, mention um, something about the scrolls. Now, when I say the evil guys are really in control of your text, in the 1611 preface in the description below, I can prove it to you. Um, they wrote it in their own words, okay? Did you know Gregory is divine? I mean, um, do you know what the inditter is? Because the inditter is of the Holy Spirit in the Bible. That means the inditter is you that put the Holy Spirit into the Bible, okay? So... Um, but we got Jesus defining what is Holy Spirit. And I there's a video below. But they have corrupted the text. They had to start with the scrolls, and then they destroyed the scrolls to get what's known as a manuscript. Now, the manuscript, they didn't have paper at that time. What they did was... When a reed comes up in the lake, if I hope people know what a reed is, you know, the cattails come up, okay, most of you will know that then. Well, that plant is a reed, 
And before it gets to the water, it's white and it's, you know, whatever size. But they layered these back and forth and they used that as, I think they called that papara paper, papara paper, or something like that. And that's what the manuscripts or the words are written on. How come I can go to, uh, or I found this article about this uh, Egyptian scroll on a, on a manuscript, uh, not a manuscript, this is on a scroll, okay? And it is 4,000 years old. 4,000 years old. If they wanted to keep the text, we would have still had it. But they didn't. That's why if you read Jesus' words, they, he even says that they'll uh, write it for their God, okay? Which means not the creator you believe in, but the creator they believe in. I will be getting into who these people are and why, and a lot of my videos I already done it. And as it comes up, I will explain it. Because these people are meditating to have a sex with a so-called female goddess. That is why they need to remain single. Our creator had his priest marry, and then his son later could become a priest. You don't see that. What you're seeing is the Eastern... Uh, belief brought into the text and it's all them that meditate over their buddhism whatever all of it every so-called religion is really just a hidden sex practice from you oh yeah i guess here is what i'm saying is where it's corrupted this is coming from Malachi 2, verse 11. And it is saying that Judith, the kingdom, the half kingdom, has profaned his tent, not a sanctuary, for our Lord, which he loves, and has married the daughter of a foreign god. This married is a so-called, I say it's a so-called sex, because they feel, they have um, a release without a release. It's hermetically sealed, <laughs> okay, hermetically sealed, meaning it, you'd have no, no loss of seed. It stays where it's at. But here is this, and then we can go here, and this is Jeremiah talking about the Queen of Heaven, and how all they started, uh, the kings, the noblemen, all started having these things. And they were vowing vows to the queen of heaven. Okay, the queen of heaven is um, the moon. Okay, the moon goddess. But I will get into that later uh, as I go through. I just want to make sure that I'm starting this video out correctly by informing you of everything that's going to happen. And I think I should now start explaining um, the text. Uh, here I use the word moving, to move. Now, this was an example that I'm going to show you here that I didn't do this to every word. What I would do would I would be I would change one letter and I'll color one letter, or I will put the letter in, I'll color it green and get the other uh, words uh, as small uh, to remove them. But this type of thing, like said to saying, uh, it happens so often that uh, it's, it's sad. Uh, even when they're asking questions, the word needs to be, a, uh, not the word said, but asked. Um, and I'm trying to make sure that every word that I'm using here 
has only one meaning. Although I told you about the word heaven, and I know that the word left, left arm, and they left the building, um, I can't, I, can't I, I, just, I just can't get around to trying to use the, a different word when they left. Uh, because I know that sometimes I can use the word went, but not all the times. Um, anyways, uh, and then like I said, I'm not going to color this yellow on all of them, but I've got it here that you'll know, and then when they research, and just like I mentioned the word darkness, you're thinking the word darkness should be yellow, um, but as you know, there is no midst of the water, it says darkness up here, they use the word darkness, so I'm using the word darkness, not emptiness, and um, oh, this is why. Uh, cosmology. He he created heaven here, and then down here he's sending things back into his darkness. He's sending himself because there's nothing else but him and emptiness. So everything that you see in our universe is actually part of our creator. Um... And here our creator said, let there be my light. And there was light. Well, our creator has shown me himself as light. And then out from his light, I've seen a hand or an arm up to about here. Um, that's in the video on afterlife. So if you want to know that uh, males out there that want to um, actually know that you have a soul, and actually know that you can talk to the dead, um, know that the abyss exists and afterlife exists, that's a video, that that's what makes me different. It's a first of a kind ever written and told, and our Creator gave that path to me, and yes, other men on this earth are seeing our Creator. It's in code, and you can't see it. <laughs> it's not out in front of you yet. Um, but encryption, encryption, encryption. And I'm going to warn you, don't change any of the text that I'm ch doing here, okay? It's too encrypted. Um, every letter has a special meaning, and every letter put together has a special meaning, and then combined... All the 160 words that I'm putting together is a one great big long mathematical uh, equation, okay? So don't think that uh, you can come in here and just change any of my words. It, you just can't do it. You know, it's going to take you several decades to figure out what I've done. It'll probably take a group of 100 of you. Um changing the word heaven to expanses these expanses are when he sent it back into his darkness some going faster and some hitting the slower form these groups and then these groups are going to be gathered and that means collapsing and then we'll have galaxies and one place and dry land appears and uh then it's then he called gathered waters. This verse doesn't connect, so it's out. Um, I will be going over all these a little bit different. I'm just going through and trying to make sure that you know that I'm changing what words I'm changing here. Uh, there will be videos, and then I will get into... Um, uh, explaining each word in each verse as I go on. There's 500 videos to make before I get to that part, part right now. Um, the word daylight. Um, our Creator makes a day, and it's daylight and night makes the day, okay? So I have to use the word day to represent daylight, or daylight as to represent that half a day when when he's talking about it, because we have to be able to see the 
the seasons and the signs, so that's why it's there. And then next he makes the uh, sun and moon. And as daylight uh, governs the daylight, which would be the sun, and a lesser light, the moon, governs the night. And they were placed in the expanse of heaven, uh, and it lights gives us lights on earth. Here's the third heaven. This is where the birds fly. Now a lot of this text here is double wording, but you won't see that until you go through all the text with me. Uh, because some of it I had made into a format, and then I kind of like, no, it doesn't need to, and then I just kind of mesh them together. So not to, uh, I, I did it to confuse you. Sorry about that, but that's what I did. I don't want you using that or ever thinking you should use that. Um, now here is text that I'm completely adding, okay? Now this text that I'm completely adding, where did I get it from? How did I get it? Well, first of all, you have to see that I had to add it to make the three verse grouping because up here I got three. And out of these, I couldn't use anything to connect it to then our creator set, okay? And then down here, I couldn't use this top one because these three make a very good group, a paragraph. So here, I needed to make a paragraph, so I used these words. Now, why did I specifically use these words? That's because Jesus taught us that he existed before the foundation of the earth which means he created angels somewhere above that we don't know about. Somewhere in there, he had created angels. Okay? So that text is lost to us. But it is needed, so it's being put here, because Jesus taught us this. Okay? So... Um, so when you say, why did I take out the words let us and have more than one creator and our creator isn't uh, one being? Well, this is what, I, what it comes down to, is that the angels he created, I will make man, not let us. He didn't need anybody to create. When you use the title creator of everything, <laughs> he didn't need any help, okay? So when it says let us, no. To the angels he created, I will make man. Now he's showing them. Now, um, and here's the definition. You know, okay, and then he, uh, I will make man in the image and likeness and let them rule over the earth. And the rest don't need to be said. And everything else gets grouped up and it kind of says the same thing pretty much. Then down here, you can see here's the definition for man. Our creator, he created, he created man, male and female. So the definition for the word man is male and female. Your words should start following our creator. Get away from using secular words and come back to our creator. And our creator, by using the, the correct words when you speak, that will help you advance farther and faster with our Creator. If, because if you don't believe that He's kind of defining what man is here, then you're the crazy one and you deserve what you're getting because you need to understand that, um, example, if I say righteous, what is righteous or righteousness? It's not in the uh, secular dictionary. It's going to come from the text. Okay, so there's a lot of words that you cannot use anymore from the secular dictionary. And you'll find that happen as I go through the text. Now I think I'm going to stop here and continue on 8. But that just lets you in on it. I know that I'm going to go a little bit faster from now on, and I'm going to get into... Um, 
what I'm adding and why I'm adding it. Not so much getting into the verses, but just hang in with me. I will get there at some point. 